We move on to a very interesting T Chief Digital Officers panel who will be speaking about the state of digital marketing and identifying its valuable marketing trends. Let me invite on stage the moderator who's going to take over co-founder and managing director of QQ Digital Media, my friend, Mr. Samir Pankara. Thank you, Sid. Good evening, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, always nice to be at the Exchange for Media conferences. Happy to be here today. Uh, we've got a really interesting um, set of panelists, and I'm going to have them over on stage in just a couple of minutes. But I just wanted to open by setting the context. It's, uh, we're talking about the state of digital marketing and the trends. What we're not going to do is spoon feed you with these are the three trends that we see emerging in the digital marketing space. I think uh, this audience is intelligent enough to glean from the conversations that we are about to have what it is likely to work out to be. But what we like to contextualize is maybe three things. <clears throat> First, I think we are in extremely interesting times because the way we perceive it uh, at QK, and I think it's something that has, is emerging in the overall market, is that the World Wide Web, as we all know it, dub dub dub, is emerging to become dub dub v dub, or the World Wide Video Web. So internet and video, and this is my pet phrase, I apologize if you've heard me say this before at earlier conferences, but the internet and video are becoming synonymous. The second macro thing or trend that we are seeing, uh, uh, or theme, is the decentralization and uh, Mr. Khanna just referred to the, some, some part of it, decentralization of power of the internet. I mean, blockchain is just one example, but if you actually start joining the dots, there are several examples of how the power and influence has got fragmented. And you see multiple social media platforms, especially for younger people. If you really skew below 20, most people are spending a lot more time on Instagram than Facebook. And that's already happening, and Facebook's aged up already, scaling, but the younger people are on different platforms. So there's a decentralization of power. And along with that point, the, the, the big theme that's emerging is the rise of digital superstars. And uh, if any of you were, uh, you know, at the, at the first YouTube fan fest, there was a really sort of epic moment as the first fan fest closed at Bandra Fort, where Shah Rukh Khan was on stage, and uh, he, was, he was talking and saying bye, and there was no punchline, and the cops had come, I was in the audience, and they, they had to shut it down, so the superwoman emerged from behind him, and he was talking just as I am right now, and suddenly the crowd erupted. And it was such a, an epic moment, because at that point in time, if you looked at the audience, they were about 80% under the age of 24, and given that instance of choosing between Shah Rukh mid-speech and cheering for Superwoman, there was no booing Shah Rukh, of course. Everybody was a fan of Shah Rukh, but at that particular instance, the, the reflex action was to cheer Superwoman. And that is a really important sort of uh, takeaway where one, one is on digital, uh, the leveraging the power of a digital superstar in order to engage the youth is, is something important. Hopefully, we'll see some of those trends uh, coming out in... Uh, in our conversation today. So broadly, what this results in is everything on digital converging towards video. Uh, more of content marketing, and this is not rocket science, you've heard it over and over again, but I think more of the same is also what we need. And somewhat more centered around these uh, influences, and not just doing that, but as, we, uh, as I call on the panelists, you'll hear what the, the you know, amazing things, and we spent an hour before this, so we've done a lot of homework. I'm sure you're going to enjoy this. Let me call on stage first um, Ankush Manchanda from Bacardi. Can we have Ankush over? Give him a big hand, ladies and gentlemen. Abhishek Aluwalia from Mondelez, probably the most loved brand here. Who hasn't loved Cadbury's and, and Oreo and whatnot? Um, Shams, as he likes to be called, Shamshuddin Jasani from Isobar who heads up Isobar and also programmatic advertising for the DEN group overall. And Shonil Charles from the Times News Network. Thank you. I'm good. I'm going to stand through this. Um, so... You can pull up a chair. Be a part of us. 
Yeah, you know, I'm trying to deflect the conversation instead of being centered around us to, so that you can talk to them and I can just be behind the scenes, Sutradhar, so to speak. So, Ankush, I actually want to open with you. Sure. Uh, I, I discovered something when we were chatting backstage that, that kind of shocked me. Uh, and uh, what emerged was uh, I heard in this whole play and focus towards uh, in, in reaching out to audiences directly through, uh, through content. Uh, very few companies have actually walked that talk and I, I can tell you certainly the panelists here have and perhaps that's why they've been chosen but one thing that shocked me, actually you should narrate the shocking story, you know what I'm talking about, millions of fans, you turned them off overnight, tell us that story. Okay, thanks for putting me, sorry, thanks for putting me on the block first up but sure. nevertheless it's an interesting story. So, uh, as a part of uh, one of the most fun and the cool brand or portfolio of brands that we work in in this country, which is Bacardi and its portfolio of brands, and as a part of the digital team, we are always enticed with, the, uh, with what are the new trends that we can bring on board to bring alive our brands towards the young consumer and how can we create that engagement, okay? So for about 18 months back, what we saw was there was this trend of digital superstars was being coming up very, very aggressively. Uh, when I, who I call a digital superstar is basically uh, an All India Bakchot, uh, Abhish Kenny, or a Kanan Gill, or a film companion. These are kind of, these are the people who have made their entire lifestyle or they've made their entire content attuned to their followers which are there on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And what we embarked on as a company and as a brand was a commitment that we're gonna go and co-create all our content in an entertaining manner which is gonna be hosted on our partner's channel, which is the creator channel. So overnight, we actually decided, and it was an experiment in India, overnight we decided to shut all our brand channels, stop focusing on the branded content which was, become, which was becoming repetitive and which was becoming machine-led, just like Sir Amit said a while ago, and we brought in the human emotions back into our content space by providing entertaining content to our consumers with the help of these content creators. And at one point in time, we used to have, like I told you earlier, at one point in time, the Bacardi India Facebook page had a million followers, and the Durist YouTube channel used to have 70,000 subs, which are purely organic. To and you shut that all down overnight? Sorry? You shut that all down overnight? We shut them down all overnight. We experimented, we put a lot of risk on the table. It proved successful not only in terms of ROIs, in terms of delivery of content, but also in terms of brand message comprehension by our consumers. Our consumers engaged with us, and we saw that massively in our social listening database where the Bacardi name and its portfolio name started popping up very, very extensively. What started as a one market example or a case study is now actually running across 13 markets in Africa. Uh, Middle East, India, Southeast Asia, and even Eastern Europe, where all our brand pages are getting shut down because we don't want to focus on branded content anymore, but we want to be the most entertaining content in the, in the community. So, you know, I'm, uh, I might be misinformed, but from what I hear, I have never come across a brand that has had any social cloud of any significance that has turned it off overnight. I know, Shams, have you heard of this? Uh, anybody on the panel who's actually shut down the reach that they've had uh, suddenly overnight, we no. come across anything. So this I think was most of the brands, sorry, uh, most of the brands in India still want to do posts on digital and the exactly. keep their 5 million, 10 million uh, likes alive on their Facebook page, which is uh, irrelevant in today's world because you don't have organic reach. So, yeah, I've never heard of a brand which actually does that. So, Ankush, yeah. those 1 million fans just on India, and you've done this across Southeast Asia and uh, the Middle East, Africa, I understand. Yes. And so it's fair to say that the, the new world or the emerging markets are teaching the emerged markets the, the, the future direction of things to come? Absolutely. Uh, see, the emerging markets or the developing markets have the appetite to take a risk, which the developed markets today do not have the appetite to. So we are actually leading the curve for the entire Bacardi world today where we are telling, we are, we are telling the, our counterparts in the developed worlds, okay, this is a trend coming up, let's just follow this one. So the other trend that we see coming up and more and more FMCG brands are utilizing is social listening, okay? So on one side, while your content is being co-created with entertainers, yeah. on the other side, the yeah, analytics... I want to come back to that because that's a broader point, but I, I'm going to put you on the spot and if you can, you can choose to answer this. These followers that you, that you had, were they all organic? 
uh, on the tourist sub on the tourist channel absolutely and on facebook were they acquired or organic or a mix of half both or, half organic half acquired got it and so you shot that up. now interestingly what's also what you're listening over here is something uh, well you could call it interesting to put it euphemistically uh, i'm sure you noticed that and most of you have noticed engagement on facebook has fallen off the cliff and it's been happening over a period of time but since jan a lot of companies that were focused on driving traffic to their websites from facebook uh, anybody in the audience here who's using who has been using facebook to drive traffic to their website can you see a show of hands yeah what what's been your experience have you seen a massive drop off in the last 4 to 5 months from facebook driving traffic to your site yeah for the actually the reach and engagement has just been killed by facebook exactly so reach and engagement has been killed Exactly. So call this Wall Street pressure or whatever you might. What's clearly become evident is between the two behemoths, Facebook's attempting to be more content oriented, but kind of uh, schizophrenically also killing engagement of people who are trying to create content on Facebook, but wants to be much more content than just social. And YouTube, that is massively content, uh, is trying to be more social. If you see the kind of features, community features, and things that they're launching. they just announced at vidcon right now that they're also going to uh, launch stories so guess what no points for guessing so you'll have stories on your facebook instagram snapchat and youtube now has a story feature coming up so you know it's going to become so a lot of the same and this is what i mean in doing so the power is being decentralized from the big guys actually in the hands of the users and the people who've become large on these platforms so uh, shams maybe we, we can quickly move to you in terms of uh, you run programmatic uh, i i want to actually pull the audience again how many people are familiar with the term programmatic ad advertising raise your hands and apart from you sir who would like to take a shot at explaining what programmatic is probably no one so over to you can we demystify it because very few people understand it a lot of people no, use gonna, the term i'm going to use it in a but a, a 30 second definition that people can it, it digest seconds. uh yeah. basically buying audiences not spots basic i mean I'll, i'll put it as basic as that you use automation to buy audiences the right kind of audiences now there's an entire science behind how do you understand those audiences what is the kind of data that you can collect on that but in very simple terms you will not be buying a spot on a particular home page you'll be buying audiences just very simply put uh, in terms of that now coming up to uh, what's happening on this space uh, technology has reached to a stage uh, through programmatic through data that i can use deterministic ids to talk to individual consumers so when for What's example a deterministic id uh, which to... means that i know or say for example what happened on cambridge analytica when this whole fiasco happened was that for each and every individual person i know hundreds and thousands of attributes of what they like what they dislike what are the uh um, you know communications they do for example uh, whatsapp knows you better than you know yourself yep. because whatsapp will be reading all now that entire data is deterministic id because uh, it is centered around your whatsapp id for example the same thing is on facebook the same thing we do through crm through data now that is something that you would use in your data pool when you're doing programmatic targeting so i can actually do so much the technology is already reached to a level where you know something like which we did earlier which was retargeting and um, you know uh, cookies and uh, look alikes that's 5 years old today i can do one on one communication but the difficult part for a brand is that do we really want to do one to one communication uh, so the technology is there how is it that you're going to create content which is going to be enable which is going to enable you to talk to the right consumer in the right way and still not be so expensive that i need to create so if i'm mondelez for example who needs to reach out to almost a billion people in india because everyone consumes chocolates i'm not going to create like today there are 400 million users i'm not going to create 400 million Obviously, different yeah. content pieces because i want to reach out to four now we need to start realizing who and listening to our consumers just rather than just using programmatic as a channel to reach to them because programmatic can also give you a lot of insights data can give you a lot of insights like for example someone who i think we were talking about one of the i think we were talking about the videos there were a 5 second video versus 7 second video some completion rates that are there there's so much data available the data is only used to fine tune your media the data is not used to fine tune your content 
and that's the power of data that we are we're, we're actually not using. So we, for example, we use that because as a media and a creative agency, we combine those two. So you need to use the data that is coming out, listen to your consumers, both on your media, your social media, your uh, search. The consumers are talking to you. Listen to them. What do they want? They, they are interested in watching this video. Please give more of that video. They're not interested in this content. Please stop giving this content to them or change the content that is there. So Shams, where's that's the gap? a very important Where's the gap in this? Because, um, you know, I'm sure the audiences, as you and I, we, we've heard this before about listen to your customer, even before digital came up, right? It's, it's always been about that. Nothing has changed. But somehow between the, the, the making that statement, and, uh, and, and you, you all are uh, thought leaders in, in your space, Making that statement and the execution of that, there is such a massive gap. Uh, where is some of this, and, and it's from a spend perspective is, as well as its execution perspective, so let me specifically ask this, do clients actually understand the data that you're throwing at them? Is there a need to uh, do this education in smaller groups, or are we getting into this analysis paralysis where everybody thinks that they're using data but not really actually using it? They discuss it, but they don't implement the learnings. Are you seeing that? Yeah, so I'll throw that up to the clients here as well. Uh, so let me just add to that. Uh, we, we, are the, we try to be the ones who make sense out of it. Yeah. Now it depends upon the maturity level of the client, how mature the client is, and then how much we want to talk to them, what level of conversations that we want to talk to them. Uh, but really, yes, you need to make sense out of the data. There's too much data. Uh, as a digital practitioner who's been in this industry for so 18 years. So there's a need to simplify. There is you know, a lot of data around. You know, we talked about unified messaging on the previous panel, Devendra was... We uh, need uh, to pick and choose what data we really need to use and which is going... And what is the KPI? Everything comes down to KPI. And the most important... I mean, but, right but now... But does it? Does everything come down to KPI? I mean, if you juxtapose that to what Mr. Khanna was saying, that have we killed the real use of digital by making everything too numbers no, based. So, correct. So, but what, what I mean by KPI is, and that's what the main thing is, digital today is too much driven by uh, digital marketing KPIs. So when I'm saying KPIs, I'm not saying, so it's too much driven by likes, impressions, video views, uh, time spent, engagement. Now those are a very small set of KPIs. A bigger KPI with the brand managers and the companies that are looking at is, what's my sales? Is it really making a difference to my brand? Abhishek, you want to jump into this? Just in make it as simple as that. That's what, we're, that's what I mean by KPIs. No, absolutely. Uh, How much it was influenced by what is dhanda uh, kitna bada? Because you hear a lot of that and a lot of good stuff gets flushed down the toilet because of that. So how do you see it at Mondelez? Okay, I will, uh, and, and, and this essentially KPI of revenue is something which, uh, you know, e-commerce, the, you know, the, the, the business unit I represent, uh, you know, we, govern, we are governed by that. When I say that, at the end of the day, we uh, e-commerce is as much as a revenue as well as equity, right? So bottom line is, is uh, for us, is that if you're investing $100, the KPI in terms of revenue, that is one. And then there is, you know, if, is it helping me drive equity of the brand? Does it get picked up in the tracks? Um, you know, are consumers talking about it in social media? And we've done some executions in India, in, in China, in other markets, which has proven uh, that, you know, uh, e-commerce can do both. So I think KPI is definitely good. It depends on how you want to classify KPI. For, for us, it is, it is both revenue as well as, uh, you know. Yeah, I think, uh, I think it, sorry, I'm just cutting it out there. Too many, that's why digital marketing is still not big, is because the power of digital marketing is not really... Uh, you know, taken. Right now we're talking about just small KPIs of impressions, clicks. We're not really talking about how businesses are being impacted by digital. There are, there is, there are huge businesses, uh, legacy businesses, which are being challenged because people are using the power of digital to create brands and sell and content. And we have lots of examples of that. So, so That's you, something that brands are not understanding. When you say digital marketing is not big, we, I do want to contextualize 12,000 crores but spent where 12,000 crores, I mean, just think about that for a second. How many people who are actually creating content are seeing that, or is that all going to media? And, and we'll come back to that, but I want to come back to you, Abhishek, and just, in, you know, I don't know how many of you saw, there was a very interesting campaign that Cadbury's did. Uh, how many Shirley Sethya and Arman Malik fans in the audience? 
No, surely Sethi Arman Manik fans? Well, well, okay, so very few people watching you. How many people watch YouTube? This seems like a, okay. And you did that, and, and how many people know let, Arman Malik? Let me, yeah? let, okay. let me uh, put a point. How many, uh, how many people have consumed Cadbury? Everybody. Like. How many have used, uh, you know, Cadbury as a brand to express their love on Valentine's? A lot more girls. I thought it would so, be the other way around. So, yeah, so the, the fact is that what we did in Valentine's, and, I, and just to build on, 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 uh, on, on the point, that it is about, uh, you know, creating a differentiated proposition, uh, integrating on what's happening in, above the line, on, on, and, you know, you know, bringing that thought in in terms of a proposition to the consumer. So we created something called, um, you know, a gift box, which uh, consumers, a gifter can buy, give it to the giftee, and the giftee essentially opens, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the, you know, uh, uh, blips open, opens the box, gets an augmented reality application, and, and, uh, and, uh, and essentially the content comes to life. So when I say content, it's the personalization of messaging, you know, which, you know, expression of love, uh, you know, and how the person feels. So now things like this essentially is what digital can do, right? Uh, yes. And the idea behind that was creating an experience that's that right. was the core thought. This was the application of that thought of creating that experience, I that's guess. That's right. That's right. And then you had Arman and Shirley create a jingle that that's kind of right. dovetailed with and this. And then there was integration even in social media of yeah. this and particular... And I shouldn't call it a jingle because it wasn't. It was a great song. Yeah. It was far better than just a jingle in that right, sense. It was a song. It was actual it, content. Yes. It was a it content. Was, yes. And then content was deployed not only in TV, uh, in social, but also in e-commerce initiative. So you were creating almost like a 360 right. on, a, on a particular... And which essentially drove revenue. Right, so it, it was, yes, it drove equity. Uh, we, you know, we owned Valentine's in that time. We Anything were, you can share with the audience? What was the lift uh, in I could, I could, I could say we were stocked out. Uh, it was? It, I was, we were stocked out. You, was, you were running yeah. out of We uh, were stocked inventory. out on this particular SKU. Uh, we, uh, you know, uh, the, it was the, I, again, I can't share numbers, but it was, you know, um, much ahead of what we had planned. Uh, you know, the demand was much ahead. And that essentially shows that if your if your if your proposition is right, it's well integrated, right? Uh, uh, and there is enough noise uh, around this, it, you, you get, get a, 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 a multiplier effect. Got it, Shoni. I'm going to come to you in a second. But while we're on the topic of uh, the impact, uh, yeah. Ankush, just quick, uh, 15, 30 seconds. The stuff that you did with the influencers and on the influencers channels, not a Bakari channel because you shut that down. And I think sure. incredible thought there. Uh, what? What was the lift in actual, what can you share in brand recall, in, your, in, in, this, uh, in business, what actually went up? So, see, the drastic shift when we did from branded content to entertaining content was that... And branded content means stuff that you commissioned branded versus content giving means creators this broad brief and then letting them be exactly. a lot more independent in what they were putting out. Absolutely. Right. Branded content means something that my own company or my own digital agency will produce it for us, we'll put it on a brand channel and then put $100 to push that to the relevant audiences, okay? Whereas a creator content will mean we'll just brief the creator, we'll give them a guidance, they will make the content basis the nativeness of their own channel and their own followers, and the brand message will be seeded into that particular messaging, okay? So when we made this shift between branded content to creator-led content, we did a campaign with All India Bakchot called the Bacardi House Party Sessions Campaign. It was a three-month-long campaign with new, uh, Tanmay and with Nuclear hosting it, we not only got ex extremely high numbers of user-generated content, which are ranging in about three to 4,000 music pieces that we could work with, and the brand lift was up to about 4x. So 4x four, brand lift versus what you'd done as so branded content. Ex absolutely. So 4x was the gap between when you do branded content, whereas once you do creator-led content is what our brand got on digital only on the back of Fantastic. three months of What was your expectation when you went to market with this? Did you expect it to be double? Did you expect it to be 4x? Did you expect it to be 30% better? Uh, honestly, we were also shocked about it because we never imagined it was an experiment. You would have commissioned this basis some thought. What was that thought? How much better? Or was it a risk that you took? So we basically looked at a trend line in the year prior to that, where we had experimented with, uh, where we had experimented with influencer-led content. And for the first time, we had, what we had done was we put the same content on an influencer page and same content on a brand channel page. The influencer page got us nine times more engagement. Wow. Who, who is your media agency and your creative agency? 
I would not like to say that. <laughs> oh, it's public, isn't it public knowledge? <laughs> oh, it's, who's represented? It's, it's uh, BBDO and OMD. Okay, awesome. So, uh, and, and they were obviously supportive of this. That's how you pulled it off. Uh, not really. Moving on to Shawnee Lynn. <laughs> we got you. <laughs> okay. Uh, not really, actually, because we actually decided to go and work directly with our, uh, with the content creators because yeah. it's best when you sit with them. Right face to face and you interact with them on a very, very personal level because you have to understand quite a few things. One, the content creator needs to understand that he, he's, he's embodying a brand. It's right. a relationship that you're building with the person. It could last one year, two years, three years, but it's a long-term proposition. It is not an association where you call him, ask him to do three tweets and the brand manager tells him, okay, what to host. And that's host the and point about the sprint versus a marathon. You, this is about a marathon, not a sprint. We come back to that. But Shawnee, very interesting times for you as, as the Times News Network. And you're, you're talking about a, a serious thing. And we all know that news in India has become a lot of, is dramatic to say the least. And we know that one man can be credited with that, but everybody's followed. Correct. Uh, and you guys created that, uh, uh, that trend, I guess. That's right. Uh, knowingly or unknowingly. But the point is, uh, do you feel with all that's going on in, in digital, and you're responsible of making that shift for an for a incumbent into this new space, and obviously the Times Group does a lot of cool stuff on digital, but in news, are you threatened by what's going on and how you're going to crack it and tell us something about what do you think is going to be path breaking for you to achieve this? So, you know, we currently have this challenging task of taking a massive existing news brand and that too, like uh, Samir rightly said, you know, is in its position, has a way of delivering news, which is Times Now, online. And uh, we've been at it for the last year or so and we realized that, you know, it's diametrically separate. The TV guys can't do online. So we've, in the past one year or so, we've gone about and set up a team of about 200 people who write. Uh, there's an editorial newsroom which writes about five, 700 stories a day. There's a digital video team that does, uh, you know, uh, made for digital video. But what, what we felt was that we, we, we do video for a living. You know, we've been doing broadcast for the last uh, 10, 15 years, and we should ideally be the winners in this game. But video has got extremely democratized. There's a lot of people out there who are making content which is as good, if not better. Luckily for us, we have an edge up that we have facilities, equipment, you know, talent. But again, they're all programmed towards broadcast. So the challenge this year is to shift everyone's mindset to think broadcast plus digital, as well as, uh, you know, incubate this uh, digital first video. But it's not easy. There's a complicated uh, audience in this country. You know, it's difficult to... Uh, create content which uh, which appeals to different age groups. So we are struggling with the younger lot, uh, and um, you know what? My one of my examples, which I one of the things which we decided to do uh, on the get go with regards to transitioning to video was we had to kind of uh, understand that we are not programming for ourselves anymore. You know, m most of our channels are stuff that we would like to watch, easy to to manage, easy to hire talent and get that going. But what the, what the large masses of this country, especially the younger lot, are watching now and not necessarily what the traditional broadcasters are putting out. So I usually give this example that you know, if you go to YouTube trending on any given day, folks like you or a lot of people in this room will not consume 80% of the content which actually India is consuming. Yeah. So we're having that uh, you know, challenge right now to figure out how to bridge that gap. Uh, like I said, there's hundreds of producers and you know, talent out there producing video. And then the big guys also trying to come in like us, trying to play the game. But it's a, you know, a fair, open field, and everyone's competing with each other right now. You, you, you seem to have had a lot of success, at least with, the, with Mirror now, which has scaled massively. Uh, you know, obviously, Fee D'Souza at the helm of that has done a fantastic job in terms of bringing that to digital. And we see, uh, is, that, is that something that's emerging dynamically, or is, is that a planned approach? Uh, because you certainly got a big win on that one. So, you know, I would say that Mirror is in a unique position. It's a new product for us also, just been around for about a year and a half. But we have a, a fantastic anchor leading that, who's being able to, who's one of the few anchors who's being able to bridge from broadcast to television, which is paid to Souza, as you, most of you would know. And what my feeling is, and I've been, you know, uh, you know speaking to Faye about this as well as management, is that I think a lot more people, I'm, and I'm sure in this room as well, have, have, are familiar with Faye, but have consume the content on a social platform or online or on your mobile device rather than see her on TV. So that's an interesting play out. It wasn't designed 
and we didn't do it uh, thing, but we're going to build on it. And, uh, you know, we're looking at additional anchors who can, you know, bridge the gap from broadcast to television, uh, broadcast right. to digital. Another digital index, sort of knowledge index for the audience. How many of you have caught up with a guy called Dhruv Rathi online? Put your hands. Anybody seen Dhruv Rathi? Okay, one or two people. I mean, these are some sensations in news space. I mean, he calls himself an independent news agency of sorts. Correct. And if you actually measure analytics of Dhruv Rati versus uh, Republic online solely, because Dhruv Rati is not available offline uh, or on analog, uh, it is off the charts. And it's a while since I saw that, but I remember it being like 3x or 4x in terms of engagement and almost near similar scale. And this is with zero money versus one would assume that there is a lot of money backing a, a, a giant like Republic. So the, again, coming back to the point of uh, the decentralization of power where somebody as an individual just by dint of content and sort of their own take on stuff. And, and the beauty I think is on digital, the markets have become so fragmented, there's, there's nothing, uh, you have to find your niche and then blow it up because there's a market for everyone. If there's a market for Dinshak Puja, I'm sure, have you heard of Dinshak Puja at least? Has, okay, awesome. So people have heard of Dinshak Puja, not Dhruv Rati. But, uh, but yeah, so, you know, there is a market for everything, and I know it's cringe pop, but so be it. So, um, you know, just joining some of the dots, you know, uh, Shams, we, we, we talked a little bit about this backstage, but if you can elaborate, everybody approaches this and the whole the sprint versus a marathon analogy and says, okay, now I had to check box digital, so I did digital. Oh, now the new thing is content marketing with influencers, so check that off, right? Uh, but between you and uh, Ankush, maybe if you could talk about very quickly how it cannot be, how that influencer marketing thing is, is not the end goal, it's actually the start point. And then how did you connect the dots? So talk about it macro and then maybe Ankush could quickly fill in uh, on, 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 the, on their specific example. Yeah, so uh, I think uh, when, uh, when we were talking about earlier, first, uh, we digital agencies are very good at uh, also doing that. So I'm sure if your digital agency is not doing that, I'm there. Uh, so we'll do that. Uh, so more than happy to work with influencers, not a problem. Uh, so uh, what's happening in India is that a lot of brands are using influencers as a sprint. As you said, I have a campaign, I have a massive campaign and I need to create noise around it for this particular campaign for the next 45 days. Let me try to get influencers to talk about it for the next 45 days. I'll pay them and then switch it off. Uh, that's the normal trend of how we do it out here, here in India. Uh, regionally and globally, by region I mean Asia Pacific and globally, the trend is to have an association which is a longer term association with your main influencers. And that, I don't mean celebrities, I mean influencers. So there's a difference. You have celebrities and then you have influencers. You use your celebrities, uh, like for example, you've got Virat Kohli who is now pretty much on every, every brand has got Virat Kohli on it. But there are a lot of influencers out there who are influencing a particular community or a particular target that is there. Use them as a part of your longer term strategy. Use them for a year, a year and a half, two years, three years on a sustained effort to build your brand, to build communication with your audience and to build a two-way channel. It's not just a one-way channel. It's not just say, the uh, influencer talking about it and no one listening. So Could you say it's almost like making the multiple influencers into brand ambassadors? Absolutely. So rather than one Virat Kohli, and, you could have 20 it, influencers who actually do the role of a brand ambassador because they're doing it for one year absolutely. now. Absolutely. It could be a thousand. I mean, right. uh, I'll give you an example of how now brands and businesses are getting created using a channel like this. So there is a, I mean, I was in Cannes uh, last week and there's a brand called Glossier, which is a makeup brand, which is created just using digital and which is challenging the legacy makeup brands that are there. And that's increasingly happening because traditional brands are really using digital just as a so add-on. So this is a brand that's born on digital, exists born only on digital, in digital? Completely. It's, it actually started off as a blog. It was a, a blog, a blogger who started this off. And she then went on and created a brand which is now getting sold because they are co-creating the brand and the product with their consumers who then become influencers for them. So for example, they came up with this, uh, so there is a, a makeup cleanser that they talk, spoke about and how they actually, and I'm not going to talk about the entire case study, you can go and look, look at it online, but how they used social to first understand what the consumers want. They reached out to 
thousands and thousands so your point of about listening to the consumers was done socially no money really spent small no money thousand, yeah. they, they have a technology behind it they are they have data behind it but i'm saying understand what the consumers are talking to you not just use data to communicate to them understand what they are talking to you create a channel where you can actually speak to them and get their feedback create co-create brands with them so there were a thousand people who created this product with them those thousand people then went and spoke to 200 500 thousand people in their network saying that i created this brand and that brand has got a 10000 waiting list now they want to stock and this is a digital only brand sold only digitally created only digitally using content and people only digitally and they are challenging and there are so many examples there is michelle uh, fan is another great example i mean new york she is all over hoardings etc half a billion dollar valuation of a business, you know, these uh, beauty packs, brand. subscriptions, stuff like that. Yeah. And I think there's some happening in India also. I think there's, there's a few digital only brands for food, uh, for uh, men's grooming, by the way, is a, is a big segment Absolutely. that we're seeing the, scaling. The, the, so, so what we're saying is, it's not, I'm not saying that, you know, it, digital here, digital, do, do only digital brands, but use the power of this medium, the way it is supposed to be meant and not just Something that I think for digital, as you rightly pointed out, we used to earlier say, Achha, thoda paise baj gaya, 5 percent money is left, so let's do digital. That was used to be 10 years back. Now it's saying that, okay, let's do some influencer marketing because there's some money. Let's, let's see how I can do some influencer marketing here and there. And that really is not doing the job that it is supposed to. Content is not really doing the job that it's supposed to. So, Got it. you know. uh, Samir, I'll answer your question in two ways, uh, with two points, okay? One is the importance and the investment levels that the digital medium gets in the FMCG companies today, okay? Now, at, at my organization, and I can give you an example because I've been with Bacardi for about six years now, it took us about three to five years to make our organization a digital first communication organization, okay? Today, our budget investments on a media split are 90% on digital and only 10% go on above the line mediums, okay? The 10% with a clear objective of ensuring reach and recall, and the 90% with a clear objective of that you have to deliver engagement with the young audience, because it's been scientifically proven that the higher your engagement, the more is your increase in the purchase of in intent. Okay? That's been proven as a market. And this you did not because your surrogate advertising on TV didn't work, but because you saw the results on digital. Because one Absolutely. would argue as a liquor company, you can't do much, but you could do surrogate, but you didn't think they, th this delivers that much more results. Okay. Absolutely. I mean, we still release a TV commercial every year on television and on sports channels, but that's to a very specific different set of audience, which is above 30. But we also have to acknowledge the fact that we are living in a country which, is, which has the largest under 30 population today. Right. They don't believe in one-way advertising anymore. And power to these guys, they want to have a two-way communication with the, each and every brand that they're engaging with. And they want to be emotionally involved with those brands. And hence comes the engagement part of each and every campaign that you're driving forces. Okay. The second point that I will answer is, we as brand marketers have taken up buzzwords. Okay. Have taken up what, sorry? Have taken up buzzwords. Right. So, for example, first is word digital, which yeah. meant Google, then it meant Facebook, then it meant video, today it is influencer. Okay? Nobody connects the dots from one to Absolutely. four together and yeah. they don't think of the brand and the center of it or the objective that the, why is the consumer on digital today? Okay? Just to give you an example, uh, yes, my fellow colleagues in the digital space also do that because they have a checklist or a checkbox to be signed off with. Whereas there is another approach that you can take with influencer marketing. For example, when we launched the campaign called Bacardi House Party Sessions with AIB and Nuclear, we not only yeah, announced it. That's the fourth it, time you plugged them. This is yeah, amazing. I mean, like, they are obviously really, awesome partners. <laughs> yeah. We are yeah. really proud of the work that yeah. they've done. I'm, I'm sure I'm, they're yeah. awesome. Yeah. So, it was not about working with AIB. That's the first one. Fifth, okay. okay. And counting. <laughs> it was about the messaging that the brand wanted to create. And yeah. the brand wanted to create a platform which is connect music and give it back to the music community. And you wanted the biggest distribution partner with you, which fortunately, unfortunately, AIB has it. <laughs> the fifth time. Yeah. <laughs> okay, no. six. Okay. But power to those guys. Yeah. It started with a call-out video, it came to an entries, it came to selection of the artist, it came to giving the artist a platform where they could perform, and it finally came down to giving the music videos, and then performing at NH7 Music Festival. It was a full-blown 360 campaign. The centerpiece was the influencer. 
and the freedom to the influencer very importantly and 100% freedom to the influencer yeah. with a brand guideline that this is what the brand stands for got this it. is the challenge this is the objective please do what you are best at we've got 6 minutes i want to do one last round for each one of you uh, one of the biggest things that we are seeing is you know we we talked about this number this but 12000 crores give or take 2000 crores depending on which research report that gets spent on digital you've heard each one of these gentlemen speak of um, you know uh, the the forward thinking approach to what is the right way to deal with this industry and one would assume that thought leaders and anybody who's been on the panel uh, any panel today would i think echo similar stuff uh, however oddly enough less than 250 crores is going towards exactly what we are talking about very very little money out of 12000 crores less than 250 crores is going towards the kind of stuff that we're talking about and at any such medium if you talk to the thought leaders they would say this you're leading an agency you you we have you know cdos here cmos here what is i mean you're making your dent in your organization but speak on behalf of the other folks and maybe we can you know if we can start with you know from wonderless perspective you have this you have this view the the video market just grew 250% last year okay no company has increased their budgets by more than 25 30% there's this massive gap that's now getting created because the market's growing 300% inventory is growing and budgets are going up by 20 30% and we know this we know that the future is there and this strategy exists why can't we see people saying okay i i spent 20 crores i'm going to make it 50 crores why is that not happening no i just want to add to that that you know it's it's just not uh, an issue about only 250 crores we're actually seeing a depletion in the ticket sizes you know what marketers were willing to pay since we're in the content create creation business as well and we do a lot of branded content for partners where people were willing to pay say 50 60 lakhs for a piece of high quality content now the demands are coming at you know we need to do it in 15 so we're seeing that trend but the overall well. adex is growing there isn't any decline in that so whose fault is that? that i would say is probably the fault of the content creation community and you know speaking on that uh, on their behalf i think it's very typical uh, in, in india that we fight over s- with things that are emerging and so people are maybe competing and go- and dropping their prices versus coalescing and sort of helping lift that entire piece you know for a 15 second video in china by the way a influencer with one, more than 1 million fans on the uh, on on, a, on this platform called doi can make 30 lakhs for a 15 second video 30 lakhs and 1 million fans there are many people in india who have more than 1 million fans on social media now that is the reality but i would say that there is probably less than 5% who would be able to talk beyond double digit lakhs for content right so there is this gap i wish mean, what's what gives how how is this paradox even existing so first of all i think um, um, let me talk about our organization so uh, overall in terms of digital now when i say digital it is both content as well as content production as well as digital uh, pure media uh, that percentage has gone up tremendously okay uh, approximately on a category like chocolate it will be as very very high double digit right now uh, obviously that shift is happening though tv is you know a category like ours tv has to be there but digital is i have seen in past 3 years the percentage uh, contribution which is allocated towards digital has really grow, uh, gone up content is one piece i think as an organization we are we are really working on because it's the, it's exactly like when you make a film the film also needs to have you know you you make that much uh, uh, effort to create go to the right uh, uh, you know production house to make it similarly when you do a digital campaign you need to make sure that the quality uh, you know in terms of the content has to be that powerful sure. so i think uh, our organization has has realized it um for chocolates or bon beta when we do it today we ensure that uh, even if it's a digital only content it is the right investments are put in the content piece itself uh, but i think overall as an industry and fmcg particularly we have some way to go god we've got two more minutes uh, there was a three minute buzzer we're not out of time yet but uh, so uh, so quickly um, ankush the you know the right amount of money going somewhere Did, when you did that campaign did you do ppms sorry 
Did you do PPMs, the typical way of, of commissioning content where the, the production house then comes and presents the concept before they go to shoot? Did you have detailed PPMs? No. And so this is my point that in the same structure, yeah. if you try and execute this and not sort of let it lose and take that risk, it's impossible to execute. So just tell us why, w when do you see this gap getting bridged between what's happening in the market and the opportunity and okay. the brands actually spending the money to fill that gap? Uh, How many Samir, years? I think it's Six a months, three years, five years, two years? Um, maybe another 12 to 18 months, but it's... That's it's, fantastic news then. See, it's a gap of two points basically, okay? One is the education. Now, most of the brand, when we sit in, when, as a digital team, when we sit in a marketing conversation with our brand teams, you will see there is a 90% people who are from the offline world and only 10% people are from the digital world. It is, it is a responsibility of a digital manager to speak the language of the 90%. If you can explain your data points, going back to Sham's point also, you need to drill it down to two or three data points which are relevant to those people sitting across the table. If you can tell them what they want to know, the monies will shift automatically. Point number one. Because why is the construct of people that way? Sorry? Why is the construct of people that skewed then? Does it mean um, you need to change the... Uh, that's... Renew the set of people who are sitting on the table doing, having this discussion. That's the second part of the entire conversation that people in the marketing world need to accept that marketing is no more what it used to be two years or three years back. The more sooner you, the sooner you accept it that it's being driven by an 18 year old, by a 20 year old, by a 30 year old, decentralized and people creating brand on the digital platforms, right. the sooner that shift will Got happen it. where a balance is going to come up. Got it. Shonil, uh, before we end with Shams, uh, What's your, what's your time prediction? When is the 250 crores going to go to 2,000 crores? He said 18 months. I'm putting words in your mouth, <laughs> but yeah. Can we just repeat that? Yeah, so when is this market, th this gap that is between brands spending money and everything that we are talking about is not translating to actual revenue? Uh, when is that gap going to get fulfilled? So I've been doing, I've been at this for about seven years and you know, it was very slow to begin with, but we are at a tipping point right now. I would also put it between 12 to 24 months. Okay, awesome. I have a slightly different point of view. First, 12,000 crores is not enough. That's when we spoke about Absolutely. digital itself. But at least that's growing at 30%. Not the, the mix of that it is, is all It warm. is growing at 30%, yeah. correct. But it is still not enough. I don't think people understand this. Number one. Yeah. Number two is that uh, now to leverage that 12,000 crores, that 12,000 crores is only media. Please understand that. What, what is being tracked there is pure media spends. The creative, the content, the assets that are being created is not tracked. The disproportionate spends between media that is being spent and the creation of content, the amount of money that is being spent on content is extremely disproportionate. That, that proportion is not on television. Yes. On television, you pay a bomb to create that content and you pay a bomb to also, you know, get that content out. On digital, it's not like that. It's commoditized. I want a video made in 5 lakh rupees. The client comes and says, okay, 5 lakh rupees, video. Banado. But Shams, this that is, is question, where the start of the brief happens. You're the start of the brief is not, sorry, one second. The start of the brief is not, ke ye karna hai. like what he's done with AIB. That's not the start of the brief. The start of the brief is, ye sab karna hai, but 5 lakh rupees. Okay. What do you end up creating? Sometimes we, we put on our pockets by saying, the boss, achha, we need content which is some level. Let's try to create that level. That will only change once we are able to sit on the table with the client and say, Let's talk about these KPIs. That's why I was talking about saying that digital can make a difference to your brand in your business. You need to invest in the right kind of assets to take advantage of that. And that's when the conversation changes. Okay. Uh, so, uh, can we take one question? If there's a question or we can wrap up. I know we are a minute over. Listen, I've been told you can't take questions, but I love breaking rules. Yeah, awesome. So the naughty boy in me comes out. So listen, raise your hand. One question. Uh, Ma'am, you've already asked a question before. The lady there, ma'am. <laughs> I love you, baby. I, I love you so much. Don't worry about that. I wish I could give you the whole day to ask questions, darling. Hello. Yeah, I'm Urjita from ID Hi. Uh, hi. We spoke, uh, you spoke about the influencer marketing. Now, I work mainly with the micro and small medium enterprises. Okay. So they do not normally have a budget to go for influencer marketing. So what kind of advice would you give to such uh, businesses? It's a long one, we can take it offline. Because yeah. that seems like a long one. <laughs> Sorry, I've never worked with a small and medium enterprise, but uh. Uh, I'm sure there are smaller influencers available there. And again, it's, see, the, the sense is it's not about influencer marketing. 
It's about the what your challenge is and how to best achieve that challenge in today's world. Okay? I'll give you an example. Like Dhruv Brati, the example that Samir gave, that guy has like 20,000 subscribers on his channel, correct? Oh, his YouTube channel is about 500,000 now. Sorry, 500,000, <laughs> but I'm sure there are new up-and-coming talent in the market which have those 20,000, 30,000, 40,000 followers, which do… which the followers of those people can be the clients of your clients that you're looking at, okay? So you need to look at a match between what size and what investments you can do, but don't look at it only as a piece of influencer marketing. Look at first what, what's your objective and who can best deliver it. The right scale of influencer for the right requirement, yes. Okay, thanks so much. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you for being a lovely audience. Thank you. You guys are phenomenal, man. Give it up for the force on the stage. All right. Um, so, well done, Samir, man. I got a little insecure of you taking over my job because you're so well-spoken. Uh, that's not what my wife feels. But anyways, okay, hold on, guys. Uh, we've got... Mr. Abul Srivastav, Laksh Media Group, Executive Director and CEO. He's yearning to give you all gifts. Uh, sir, can you please come up on stage? And I will take the names. Samir, for you, this is a customized gift. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, applaud! And of course, after that, sir, sir, they're all customized, sir. So I'll take you very nicely. You have to hold my hand, we'll hold each other's hands. Shamshuddin, there he is, the Shaw Connery of this group. Sir, after that, but we won't give it to him, we'll have a contest, hold on. Since Samir said, he counted like, he said six times all India Bakshur. Okay, we, we'll now have a 10 second contest where you say all India Bakshur as many times in 10 seconds. And then you get a gift. Come on, come on. Right, sir? Love you, love you. Okay. All right, give it a count. AIB, 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 AIB. Ladies and gentlemen, can I tell you the inside thing? He's got an AIB tattoo on his thighs as well, which he'll expose in the awards tonight. Sir, next gift to him, sir. Sir, that lovely smile that you give to your neighbor's wife, I'd like you to give it to him as well, sir. All right, up next. Abhishek Aluwalia. So now let's say, once, hold on, let's see. Who's Abhishek out of these two? Oh, superb, sir. You've been following. That's how you keep a tab on who's following. And uh, Shonil Charles, he deserves one too. Love you, sir. Well done. So wanted a picture with all of you as well. So because he has to tell his wife that he's been here for a conference. All right, here you go. Wonderful. Tech Munch hashtag. Thank you so much, gentlemen.